Hey everybody, Mr. Piercy here, and what we're going to be looking at is uh, how we actually utilize the rule for 45-45-90 special right triangles. Now, in uh, a previous video, we established that the rule for a 45-45-90 right triangle is that the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg multiplied by the square root of 2. So now we're going to actually use that rule to find missing sides of a right triangle. Now, uh, you might want to have these copied down in your notes because I'm not uh, really adding a uh, separate print up for something like this where I'm going to just give you some examples. Copy down the triangles in your notes and follow along uh, as we do them. Now, uh, the one that I'm going to look at these uh, from left to right. So the first one that we're looking at uh, ha is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle where the leg, in this case, is five units long. Now, one of the things that I will expect all of my students to do is any time that you use a rule, particularly for these uh, triangles, every time that you use the rule, you will write the rule down, do whatever substitution that you need to do, and then any arithmetic, if necessary, to find your final answer. Now, this one here is a very straightforward problem. You really don't need, some of you may not need to even do the work for it right now, but this is the expectation. I'm going to start by writing the rule every time I use it. Hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of 2. Well, in this case, x represents the hypotenuse, so I can, represent, I can substitute x in for h. The leg in this case is 5, and I'm multiplying by the square root of 2. Now, if you type 5 times the square root of 2 on your calculator, it's going to give you a uh, a decimal value that we would refer to as an irrational number because it doesn't stop and it repeats forever or it, I mean it doesn't stop meaning it goes on forever uh, and we would refer to that in math as an irrational number something that is a non-repeating non-terminating decimal number. so because we're leaving our answer here in simplified radical form that's as far as we can do uh, for that one so the expectation would be that you show me the rule, you show me your substitution, and, well, there's no arithmetic to do for this one, so we can just stop there. So let's take a look at the one in the middle, see what we get on this one. Again, I'm going to say the hypotenuse is equal to the leg multiplied by the square root of 2. Every time you use the rule, you're going to write it down. In this case, the yeah. hypotenuse, again, is x and the legs are not a whole number like they were in the last one. The leg in this case is the square root of 11, whatever that happens to be. And I'm going to take that and multiply it by the square root of 2 because that's what the rule says to do. Now, one of the things that we do with radical numbers is we treat them a lot like we do variables in algebra, meaning that we can, uh, if terms have the same radical part, they can be added together or subtracted from each other. You can multiply radical parts together, uh, but you would not multiply whole number parts to radical parts. So in this case, we have 1 radical 11 times 1 radical 2. So the ones outside of the radicals will get multiplied together, but that would still just be 1. And the radical 11 and the radical 2, when we multiply those, gives me the square root of 22. And the square root of 22 can't be simplified as a so as a radical number, so that's it. We stop right there. So we wrote the rule, did our substitution, and did a little bit of arithmetic to get our answer. So now let's take a look at the next one that we see here, uh, the one on the right. In this case, we're, uh, again, dealing with a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So I'm going to say hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of 2. And... Now I'm going to substitute. Now, in this case, uh, x and y are equal to each other because it is a right isosceles triangle. So I can substitute x or y in for the uh, problem. And so I'm going to say the hypotenuse is x. The leg, uh, oops, I'm doing that backwards, not paying attention. The hypotenuse in this case was given to me to be 16 radical 2. So I'm going to substitute x for the leg. You could substitute x or y for the leg and multiply it by the square root of 2. So we start with our rule, do our substitution. Now we need to do any arithmetic that we need. 
So at this point, since x is what we're looking for and it's multiplied by the square root of 2, just like any other algebra problem, we will divide by the square root of 2. Now on the right side of the problem, square root of 2 over the square root of 2 simplifies to be 1, so 1 times x is just x. And on the left side of the problem, we'd see the same thing occurring. The radical parts can combine through multiplication and division. So square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 simplifies to be 1. So in this case, the length of my legs are 16. So I can say 16 is also equal to y. Now these are fairly basic ones. Uh, a lot of times you will see, like you, uh, the problem in the middle, the triangle that has a square root of 11, a lot of times you'll see uh, not whole numbers. You'll, you'll see weird radical numbers like you see here. Uh, and it's just, well, how do you do the math with them? So let's take a look here. These questions I chose specifically because they have uh, something unique about them, something a little bit different. Now, the one that we're going to look at first, again, the one on the left, very similar to the last problem that we just saw. They're giving us the hypotenuse, so we have to figure out well, what are the lengths of the legs. Well, again, in this case, because it's isosceles, and I know that because of the angles here, they're showing me that they're the same. I know that x and y uh, have to be equal to each other because legs have to be the same. So this is a 45-45-90 right triangle. So I'm going to say the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of 2. Substitute my, or write my formula. Now I'm going to substitute. In this case, the hypotenuse is 12. And the length of the leg, we can call it x or y times the square root of 2. Now we're going to start this problem pretty much the same that we did the last one, where since we're trying to solve for x and it's multiplied by the square root of 2, at this point we divide both sides by the square root of 2. Now, on the right side of the equal sign, square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 simplifies to be 1x. Okay? Now, some students at this point might say 6 is equal to x, or they might say the square root of 6 is equal to x, because they're trying to simplify the 12 over the radical 2 like they would if it was just 12 over 2. Well, the square root of 2 and 2 are not the same things. So this is absolutely wrong. Don't do that. Well, we wind up with 12 over the square root of 2. Now, here is where we run into a slight problem. If you have a calculator handy and you type the square root of 2 onto it to see what the decimal value is, it's going to give you a decimal value that says 1.4121, da 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 keeps going, going, going. Well, that is what we refer to in math. We classify that as an irrational number. And what we see right here, right now, we see a fraction. And at its most fundamental level, a fraction is a division operation. And I'm trying to say at this point, I'm taking a, a rational number and I'm dividing it with an irrational number, which we cannot do because irrational numbers never stop. So what we have to do We use a process called rationalization. We take it and we, we're going to take the irrational number and we're going to change it so that it becomes rational. And the way that we do that is I'm going to multiply the denominator by the square root of 2. Now, because this is a fraction, 12 over radical 2, uh, if I do something to the denominator, I must also do something to the numerator so that it maintains its same ratio. So we multiply in the numerator. Now the 12 is a whole number and the square root of 2 is not. So we, there, we don't multiply them together. It's like saying x times 12, which would give me 12x. Well, in this case, I get radical 2 times 12. And in the denominator, radical 2 times radical 2 gives me the radical 4. Now you can probably see what's going to happen next. The square root of 4 in the denominator simplifies to be a 2 and now we have a whole number in the bottom we have a rational number in the bottom so what I'm going to do now because I have a rational number in the numerator 12 and I have a rational number in the denominator the 2 those can simplify like normal and my final answer would be 6 radical 2
So x and y in this case would be equal to 6 radical 2 units long. That is a very significant step, uh, making sure that you rationalize a problem whenever you have a square root in the denominator. Whatever the square root is, you just multiply it to the top and the bottom of the fraction and simplify your numbers. So let's clean this up just a bit. And now let's take a look at our next problem. And let me pick another color here. So again, we're working with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I start with the rule. Hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of 2. Now in this case, again, the hypotenuse is uh, a radical number, 3 radical 5, to be equal to the length of the leg, which again, we can call it x or y, times the square root of 2. And we're going to treat this one just like we did the last two examples. When we're solving for the leg instead of the hypotenuse, we have to divide both sides by the square root of 2, so that way we can isolate the radical number. Now, on the right side, the square root of 2 and the square root of 2, top and bottom, simplify to be 1, leaving me with just 1x. Now, say for instance, we had 3 radical 6 in the numerator divided by the radical 2. Well, the radical numbers could divide into each other just like we see on the right side. Radical 2 divided by radical 2 is 1. Well, unfortunately, radical 5 divided by radical 2 would give me radical 2.5. And that's not something that we can have, leaving it in simplified radical terms. The radicand, the number underneath the square root, still needs to be a, a, a whole number, not a decimal of some kind. So at this point, we have 3 radical 5 over radical 2. And again, we're going to rationalize it. So I'm going to take the square root of 2 and multiply it to the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator, the radicals multiply together, so radical 2 times radical 5 gives me 3 radical 10 over, and in the denominator, radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4, and that simplifies, the radical 4 in the denominator simplifies to be 2. Now, 3 over 2, that doesn't simplify to be a whole number, but they're rational numbers, and a lot of times if I just had an answer that was 3 over 2, I could write it as 3.5. So if I want to, I could say 1.5 radical 10. And since the square root of 10 doesn't simplify anymore, we leave it like that as our final answer. And that would be for x or y. And so let's take a look at our last one here. Again, another 45, 45, 90 triangle where I'm providing you the value of the hypotenuse. Start with the rule. Hypotenuse equals leg radical 2. Oop, leg radical 2. Substituting, and again, we can think of this as x and x if you want to. I just forgot to put those on the board there. So I'm going to say the hypotenuse is 3 radical 10 to be equal to the leg times the square root of 2. So... Let me change that. Let me put my x in there. So we'll say x radical 2. And just like the other examples, I'm going to start by dividing by the square root of 2 on both sides. On the right side, radical 2 over radical 2 simplify to be 1, leaving me 1x. Now on the left side, the radical 10 and the radical 2, those can simplify. The radical 10 and the radical 2 would simplify to be 3 radical 5. And that would be the length of the legs in those cases. So these are just some examples of how you use the rule for a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. Uh, write the rule each time, do your substitution, and then do any arithmetic that you need. Paying particular attention that you cannot leave a radical number in the denominator. You have to rationalize it if you have something like that. So anyway, if you have any questions about how we work these types of problems out, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care.